Hey guys, John Hudson here from APC Rally. I just wanted to go through a little bit of gear. We're going on a four day ride. And what I want to do is just show you what I see as the priorities. So you don't waste a heap of money on buying stuff that you really don't need. Um, so for starters, obviously we've got an adventure helmet with the visor. Um, most of the time we ride with the visor up like that. And we're wearing a pair of sunnies, um, you know, it's always good to own a half decent helmet. Now the rally gear guys, um, this is pretty cheap gear, you know what I mean? It's only like $500 for a set. But when you're buying rally gear, what you want to do is simply make a rule that you're trying to get stuff that's got three layers. Because 99% of the time you'll just ride with the outer layer because it gets too hot to do anything else. So inside here goes a raincoat. Um, inside the jacket and then a thermal thing but you'll never use it gloves guys i can't recommend enough that if you're riding adventure bikes we we can't get away from doing some bitumen k's so the only thing you should ride on bitumen is leather so a lightweight leather glove is always handy now tank bag the thing about tank bags is a few things that you want to check is that it's got decent size buckles because they always break at this point because when you crash this will get grabbed and you know they often break so this one here is a rig gear and i actually think that that's the perfect size now i've pretty much always got the phone on charge which is sitting inside the tank bag and inside the tank bag i've got my phone being charged i often won't leave that on top because otherwise it'll get too hot and it won't work when i need it in here i've got a little multi meter toilet paper um, glasses and chargers and then also goggle rags so this little nifty device that's um telling me what air pressures i've got so I got this off Wish for 40 bucks, so it's pretty much an experiment. But you can see that I'm running 32 and uh, 31 on the rear. And what's good about that actually is um, the little valve caps down here, blue teeth. So I've got a, you know, a couple of different bikes. So when I'm actually going, this is the most accurate um, air gauge I've got so I'll just walk around with my little Bluetooth and I can check three or four bikes just quickly and get an accurate read for my other bikes. Now on the gear bag so pretty much this gear bag is absolutely as big as you want to go you never want to be getting bigger than this because this weight is sitting exactly in the wrong spot but because it's up high which means that when you get a little bit sideways, the bike will move um, worse than it should. But the reason I've not got side panniers on is because I save that for when I'm actually going camping or going away on a 10 day trip. Now, what I also, as a golden rule, is there's 500 different straps that hold gear on the motorbikes. The thing that, own, this is the only thing that works and this is a set of ratchet straps. Now, the reason you have ratchet straps is every time you go and start up in the morning, you'll ratchet down your gear, then you'll ride for about half an hour, and then simply every time you'll just crank that up a couple after the first half an hour of riding, and that won't move again. I don't have to worry about it. So, I'll just pull this off. Now, one of the reasons I sort of like just having one bag on the rear on a four day trip where we're just going to the pubs is when I actually walk into the pub I've got to carry my helmet, my gloves, my jacket and what I can do is oh, that's tight, yeah. what I can do is take that to the pub with one hand so if, if you get a bag try and get one with the side handle so you can carry it one-handed into the pub. Most of us do a juggling act when we're going up the stairs of a pub trying to carry all of our gear. Now I've got some gear in here that you don't need. I've got 
track notes for the ride I'm running. I've got a spare GPS for the sweep car. But, um, and then I've got a laptop set up for loading GPSs. So that's the stuff that you don't need. The stuff that's sitting at, right at the top of my gear bag is my wet jacket. Now when you're buying a wet jacket, I'm an XL jacket, so I buy a 3XL jacket. Because the reason for that is, when I pull up, I can quickly, without doing the, undoing the ratchet straps, I can undo the zip here. So the center opening zip on the bag's pretty handy as well. And I then can put a jacket on over my entire rally gear very quickly. So you always get two sizes up. I've got the pants here. Then I've got the inner liner, the rain jacket for my um, rally gear. I will only put that on if it's raining at the start of the day and I know I'm in for a real wet one. Traditionally, I'll just run with my overcoat. Um, now in here, I've got a thing of bolts. And I like to carry my tools now just in one bag. The reason being for that is I can just lay them out on the ground on top of my jacket and go to work. Now, so there are my tools, a pair of Chinese safety shoes, <laughs> a front tube. When you're buying a tube, even though you're going on a, you are carrying it as a secondary, always get an ultra heavy duty tube because if you're going to change a tie, you only want to do it once. So, carry an ultra heavy duty front tube. I've got spare garbage bags, um, two of. The reason I've got two is if it's a real wet day, before I put my boots on in the morning, I'll slip them over either sock, and that'll keep my feet dry. All my clothes are in a dry bag, so that's the amount of clothes I'm carrying. Three pairs of jocks, three socks, two jumpers, um, just lightweight stuff, and then a pair of jeans, and then the smallest pair of half-decent shoes that'll take up the least amount of gear. And guys, that's it. So that's the gear I'm taking on a four day ride. And I pretty much recommend that you do the same. Otherwise you're carrying too much. So thank you. See you later.